Hey guys! Have you ever wondered how to paint with watercolor pencils to create a nice and smooth painting? Because in this video, I'm going to show you a super easy technique that will definitely help you. By the way, make sure to click on the bell and to comment below hashtag Mockification Squad in the first 24 hours for a chance to get a shout out and to win arts and crafts supplies in my ongoing away. And now let's jump into the tutorial. For these paintings, I'm going to use my new watercolor pencil set by Faber Castell, but you can use any other set you have. Let's start with preparing the colors we need first. For the most part, I'm going to use different shades of blue, a pinkish red, green and brown colored watercolor pencils. And the way I think works best if you want to create a smooth watercolor effect using these pencils is by creating a palette first. You just need a piece of thick paper where you can create small circles or squares using the colors you selected to create a palette similar to a watercolor palette. I would recommend to use thick paper or really heavy watercolor paper for that because it has to kind of survive the whole process. But I will definitely look into other ways how to create something similar. For my actual paintings, I'm going to use my watercolor book again that I'm dividing into three sections using washi tape. This way we can experiment and practice on different paintings at the same time. The first painting we are going to work on is this beach scenery with the focus on the sky and the clouds so we can practice the watercolor smoothness. Now with our palette, the steps are similar to as you would paint with watercolors. Take your wet brush and load it up with pigments by activating the paint on the palette the same way as you would do with your watercolors. And then go ahead and apply it to your paper. Here I'm going to start with a light blue color that I applied to the top area of the paper. This is going to be the blue sky. And from here I applied the other colors to create areas where we are going to add the clouds later. I mixed in a little bit of the pinkish red and a little bit of brown to some areas just to create more warmth and to make the clouds look similar to cotton candy. I felt like watercolor pencils dry a lot quicker than watercolors, so I would recommend to paint really quickly to make sure that the surface and the paint are wet while you're painting. This way the colors can blend nicely into each other. And while the paint is still wet, grab a tissue paper, crumble it up and carefully dab it over a few areas on the paper to soak up some of the paint. This way you create really soft clouds. This technique works so great with watercolor pencils, I was really surprised. Since watercolor pencils dry a lot lighter, you have to really build up the intensity. Since I felt like the sky could be more saturated, I decided to go over the area again to add more paint on top. For this step, I reactivated more paint and applied it to the same areas to intensify them even more. As you can see, I just applied the wet paint really quickly and made it blend into each other and the clouds looked already so soft and like cotton candy. It's so cool, isn't it? And from here, I repeated the same steps with the clouds again. I used my tissue paper and soaked up the paint at some areas to create white clouds. Don't overdo it though, as we will still want to see some blue and pink areas. While the sky is drying, we can move on to the beach and the ocean scenery to practice more techniques. Here I'm using a brown colored watercolor pencil the same way and applied it to the paper starting from the bottom. This is going to be the sand part of the painting. And to create the foam of the ocean, I simply created small dots and oval shapes using the same shade of color and connected some of them together to make it look more realistic. Here we are basically painting the foam backwards. Instead of painting the water, we are creating the holes that are visible in between the water. I would also recommend to connect some areas with the beach part so everything kind of blends into each other seamlessly to make it look more natural. While this part is drying, we can create the ocean. Here I'm going to use a light green with a light blue color to mix a really nice greenish blue to make it look more ocean-like. Begin by applying the paint starting from the horizon while blending out the paint while you're moving downwards. And from here, build up the intensity. The ocean should be darker around the horizon and get lighter and lighter the closer you get to the beach area as the water gets more translucent. Here you can also use a tissue paper and dab it over the wet paint using its edge to soak up some paint to create a few small white waves. And from here, I intensify the water a little bit more while avoiding the waves we just created. If you want, you can also use watercolor pencils and directly draw something onto the paper. 
For now, I just sketched out some trees and hills in the background using a green colored watercolor pencil that I will work on more later. While this painting is drying, let's practice some more ways how you can create the sky, clouds and water. Now for the second painting, I'm going to use a blue watercolor pencil again to activate its pigments. Load up your brush with the blue colored paint and quickly apply it all over the top area of the paper. I felt like watercolor pencils still don't blend that amazingly like watercolors, but it's still possible to make it work. Now once the top art is covered in paint, it should slowly start drying by now. So to create fluffy clouds here, we are going to use the cauliflower effect that you usually want to avoid. You basically want to load up your brush with a lot of water and then apply the water right below the paint that has already started to dry while moving it around to create the shape of clouds. What happens is that the water will automatically run into the dry area creating a cauliflower effect that we will use for the soft cotton-like surface of a cloud. So the water here acts like white paint basically. Blend out the edges a little bit and move the water around to create several puffy areas of the cloud. This may take some practice, but as soon as you have figured out the general idea behind it, you can create so many different things using this method. To remove any excess blue paint in the cloud area, you can simply use some tissue paper and soak up the rest. And from here we can add more depth to the clouds by creating shadows. Begin by loading up your wet brush with a little bit of brown colored paint that actually looks more like yellow and carefully apply it to a few areas on the clouds. Here I focus on the left areas because I wanted the sun to shine from the right. Imagine where the shadows of the clouds will be and apply the paint. But don't think too much, just let the paint do its magic. Next, you want to load up your brush with a pinkish red color and apply the paint right below the brown colored parts that you just added to create a darker shade for the shadow. Make sure to keep enough white and yellow parts to make the cloud look more three-dimensional. To create the smooth and well-blended surface, it's important that the paint is evenly wet. So don't forget that you have to work quickly or the paint will dry. Now since the sky has already dried, I decided I will go ahead and intensify the color again because it looked too pale. For this step, I created a fresh new blue area on the palette and reactivated the pigments to evenly apply it on top of the already dry sky. Make sure you cover everything properly or you will get a cauliflower effect that we don't want here. <laughs> Use just enough water to be able to blend it out nicely and once you reach the area of the clouds, just blend it in with the now damp brush to carefully connect these two areas. If the brush is too wet, you will ruin the smoothness. Lastly, add a little bit of the brown and pink color to the area right below the clouds to create the first layer of paint so we can create the reflection on the water later. While the second painting is drying, let's work on the third example. Here we will combine all the techniques used in the previous paintings and we will also incorporate another method. Begin by preparing a palette with a dark blue color as here we are going to make the sky a little bit more darker. Next, apply the paint the same way to the top area of the paper while creating this triangle shape that is looking downwards. Here we will add mountains and other details later. And while the paint is still wet, go ahead and soak up some paint with a tissue paper to create a few clouds. Since this blue stained the paper a little bit more compared to the light blue color, the result looks a little bit different, but I really like it. Now to create the details right below the sky, I will just use the pencils the way you would normally use them. I created a path that I connected with the middle part of the horizon using a brown colored pencil while drawing it directly on the paper. From here, I did the same with the grass, bushes and other plants next to the road. I move the pencil in a circular motion to create round shapes. They are going to help not only blend the colors together a lot better, but they will create a nice shape and texture once we use a little bit of water. Next, load up your brush with water and carefully blend the areas together. We don't want to blend everything into a smooth layer of paint because we still want to keep some dark areas with a color pencil that we didn't completely melt with water. Another fun technique you can use is using a wet watercolor pencil. You can either use the pencil right in the wet paint or dip it into some water to activate the pigments and use it just like that. This way you can apply the pigments right on top of the paper while creating details and a really nice grainy texture. For the road itself, I used the same blue color that I used for the sky but made it lighter by mixing in more water and applied it to the paper while leaving out a thin line in between to create two sides of the street. Alright, 
let everything dry for now and we can go back to add more details to our other paintings. Now we can create a few water reflections below the clouds in the second painting. For this step I'm going to use the pinkish red color again that I mixed with the light blue color together and applied it right below the clouds to create the horizon in the painting. But be sure to leave out some areas to create light reflections on the water. From here you can add a few thin random lines across the lower part of the paper to create shadows of the water. Here you barely need many pigments as we want to keep everything really dreamy and soft. If you want you can also add a cute island with a tree inside the ocean. If you see my live stream the other day, I planned on painting the scenery for a while, but really struggled to make it look good using watercolors. But I really like how it turned out when I used watercolor pencils. The pigments were a little bit different, but it was still a lot easier to control. Now let's remove the tape and see what else we can add or change. Here I basically went from one painting to another and intensified some areas the same way as I created the first layer of paint whenever I discovered something new I could change. I added more blue paint on top of the oceans and more yellowish and pinkish color to the clouds to really make the shape of the clouds come out better. I feel like when you paint multiple things at once, you always have time where you don't work on a certain piece because it's drying. So in this time you basically take a break because you don't constantly have to look at it. So by the time you get back to your other painting, you get a new and fresh perspective. I feel like if I work on one art piece for too long I get lost, I don't really see what is wrong with it or what I should change because you're basically staring at it for so long that you can't really see anything. So you always have to take a break in between. But if you have multiple art projects you can work on at the same time, you are basically taking a break throughout the process without actually stopping. So maybe you can try it out and see if it helps you as well. And because I really like the dreamy atmosphere in these paintings, I decided to add a few stars to the sky because why not? And also more water reflections by using my white ink pen. If you want you can also use this pen to add more reflections to other areas as well. I also added a few more details to the island and the tree by dipping the pencil into some water to apply the pigments directly to the paper. This way I could create a few saturated dots of colors to make them look like flowers, apples and shadows. Another cool way to add texture and variety to the painting is by using the pencil to carefully brush on some pigments on top. Since I'm using a cold pressed watercolor paper, it has a really nice texture so when I carefully went over a few areas with my watercolor pencil, I could use the texture of the paper to create a nice pattern on the paper. But this is optional, I just really like to experiment and see how certain techniques look when you combine them. I also use this method on the clouds to create a few darker areas and to make them look softer. I think the most important part is to really just have fun without worrying that you will mess it up. Whenever I think I completely ruined my art piece, I feel like a huge weight is being lifted off my mind because before that I had this feeling of making it look super amazing and perfect, but once you think, oh well, it's ruined anyway, I might as well just mess around with it even more, it gives you so much more freedom to experiment that you feel you have even more fun painting. And since you don't worry about making it perfect anymore because you kinda gave up on that, you can use the time to really freely experiment and sometimes this way you can actually make the painting work again that looks even better in the end. And if not, that's great too. Because you still give yourself the opportunity to freely play around with your art supplies without worrying and stressing out. I also really wanted to figure out if I can make the white color pencil work, so I dipped it into some water and tried to apply the pigments to the clouds the same way as I did it earlier. And it actually kind of worked as some parts got wider and I could add a few smaller clouds around it. And in the end I used a black colored watercolor pencil to add more shadows and details and then the paintings were done. And this is the final result. I'm super happy with the way it turned out. Let me know in the comments and give the video a like if you want to see more techniques and ideas on watercolor pencils because I feel like there are so little videos on YouTube about that and you seem to be really interested in that. So let me know. And now it's time to announce the winners. And the winners of the April giveaway are Kaylee, Caitlin, and Sana. Congratulations! I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up to support this channel. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and to click on the bell to get notified when I upload a new video on Thursdays and on Saturdays. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Bye!